What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the woodshed and today we are doing an updated Skyward tutorial. What is on going on everybody? You guys have waited for it long enough. We're doing an updated Skybrid attack guide. So first and foremost, yes, I say updated. I've done one of these before. Skybrid has been my baby since Town Hall 14 and 15 when I come back to Clash of Clans a few years ago. So I love it. I have near perfected it and I'm here to share what I know with you guys. Most, first and most importantly, here's the army comp. Real easy. Nine balloons, I use the balloons, they're mostly cocoa balloons, occasionally I get some value out of them though. I'm using a six dragons, five dragon riders, um, those are the main bulk of my army, and then a lava hound, which will either play cannon fodder for my main army or for my super archer blimp. So I'm going to have four super archers, two goblins, two clone spells, one of them in the clan castle, one of them in my own army, a raid spell, and then six invisibility spells. Now we'll shift over to hero equipment. And my pets hero equipment, I'm using the Vamp Stash and the Spiky Ball. On the Queen, I'm using the Giant Arrow and the Healer Puppet. On the Warden, I'm using the Rage Gem and the Eternal Tome. Now, this one is a little more interchangeable. You can use a Life Gem. I'm sure you could use a Fireball with it. I'm sure you could use a Healing Tome with it. The Warden, I don't think, has a bad rap for either of those. Um, and some of these, I use... The Royal Gem is kind of the one that is necessary for the Royal Champion, in my opinion. You can use the haste vial or you can use the hog puppet. Either one of those, it kind of just boils down to personal preference. These two, there's not as much variance there. Um, I'm, I'm sure you could go something else like giant arrow freeze arrow or, you know, spiky boots giant gauntlet if you really wanted to. But this is my preferred way to run it. Just keep that in mind while we're going through those. There's, there's multiple ways to run that. And as far as pets go, no surprise. We run the unicorn on the queen, diggies on the warden, phoenix on my king, and Spirit Fox on my Royal Champion. Now, let's go ahead and get into a text so we can break down the tutorial. All right, replay number one. So this re replay number one, these were all done around 5,500 trophies, kind of per usual, that mid-Legends League where I like to sit in pretty comfortably. Um, this one is a Town Hall I don't see very often, but I do see people struggle with, uh, mainly because of the Poison Tower and the centralized Town Hall. A lot of people tend to struggle with this because for one of the Town Halls smack in the middle right next to a Poison Tower, so a lot of people struggle to get close enough to the town hall for the poison not to drop and for a sweeper not to push your blimp away. Which I'm going to show you guys a secret to getting through that. It's actually in the Archer Queen, which is going to blow you guys' mind. So I'm actually going to place my Archer Queen down here. She's going to clear out a couple little buildings, that and that. And then she's actually going to aim up on the mortar. And what I'm going to do here is you'll see I hit my giant arrow and my giant hero at max level takes out... Boom, 11%. It takes out a couple sweepers, takes out a couple random buildings, but there's no sweepers left. There's nothing to push me around the map all of a sudden. So what am I going to do now? I'm going to place my Barbarian King up here in the top right corner um, to kind of start to create a funnel. I'm going to place the bulk of my armies here. Loons first, dragons behind it. Lava Hound in front of the Dragon Riders, but behind the dragons because I want it to have a small head start to get into it. And I'm dragging right at the very end. And I'm actually going to pop my Warden ability relatively easy. And I actually, in this scenario specifically, I actually pop my Blimp in my, with my Warden ability. Even though I got rid of what I needed, which are the Sweepers, in order for me to get my Blimp into it, there's not a good spot for me to leave my Blimp where I now don't get hit by the Poison Tower, right? Because if I come out on either one of these sides and I get close enough to the Town Hall, that Poison Tower... It's going to make life very difficult for me to get that and that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my blimp. My blimp's going to come through. I'm going to pop it somewhere in this area because um, it's under the Eternal Tome, so it's not being bothered. Giant Bomb's going to go off. It does not matter. One will not do it to me. Um, so I'm going to place all of those, place my two clones, my rages, my invis, and I'm going to time them out. And I'm actually just going to take apart that middle compartment, just completely dismantle it. I actually get rid of that poison tower thanks to the super archers right there. I'm going to get rid of the town hall. I'm going to get rid of another scatter shot. I'm leaving a lot of this base kind of torched. And even though there's some um, ice golems down there that were making life uh, annoying for the start of my troops over here, and I do have a little bit of separation between a dragon and a dragon rider over there on the bottom, um, I still have all my troops and a bunch of dragons on the very top. And they're going to be the main thing 
helping me push through the outside of this base. You notice I saved my royal champion until we're at 70% through the base. Why did I do this? Because for one, I want her to be fresh when she comes in and helps give my, my uh, wave of troops almost like a second wind, right? So what she's going to do is she's going to come in and actually take apart this these outside parts where I can see where my um, dragons are starting to weaken. My um, royal champion can come in there and actually take, for one, the benefit of the rage gem boost from my grand warden, but can actually help take care of, again, a lot of this stuff in the middle that my king and queen cannot because they don't have a way to break through the walls. So that's normally what I save her for, is I get rid of a lot of the guts to the base, and my royal champion ends up cleaning up what is left of it that my archer queen or my king cannot. You'll notice the healer puppets are actually on top of my royal champion. There's the rage, or there's the royal gem coming into play in order to give her almost full health. The haste vial is going to absolutely help her obliterate these last couple buildings, and the heroes carried us through the back half of that attack. I'm more than happy to to see that. I'm just happy to see a three star, no matter how it comes. Let's go into another example. All right. Number two, right? Here we go. So this is a base that's very similar to one I like to run very often in my wars. Um, this is a base that's very annoying. It's basically an anti-three-star base against air attacks, which now that Root Riders have been nerfed, this is becoming far and far more popular. Now, here's the secret. And if you come across me, because I'm showing you this tutorial, you're not allowed to three-star my base. It's not allowed. If, if you come across me, you have to skip this. You have to give me the trophies for it, right? That's the rule. So... Here's what we do. We do something very, very similar like we did in the last one. We're going to use our Archer Queen to get rid of the sweepers because the sweepers are what is making it to where the anti three star part because I can't get anywhere here in the middle in order to actually take out any of the big stuff. And this is going to be one of the few times you see me use a blimp and not focus the town hall with it. So I did that. I kind of sacrificed my Archer Queen. Now, some of you are wondering, how do you set that little bit of funnel that you used with your king and queen last time? I'm still using my king. I used just a random dragon over here on the side because I'm planning on getting enough value with my blimp and my royal champion to get rid of the town hall that I'm not particularly worried about setting a funnel because I think there will be nothing left of here when I'm done because I got the air sweepers. Um, now, it is very important to note, right? So I throw down everything, same order I did last time. While the hound got out in front, I'm using the blimp. Um, along with the Warden's ability, in order to get into a very, very good spot. Dropping that straight down, going to take out a lot of Inferno Towers, going to help take out the Eagle, going to take out the Monolith, going to take out the Grand Warden Tower. I'm getting a lot of value out of my blimp right there, right? But now here's the hard part, and here's the sketchy part about an attack on this end, right? If I don't get a ton of value from that, I'm screwed. There's no way I can recover from this. It's a very hard thing to recover from. It's going to be hard enough for me to get to Town Hall. Ideally, I would have liked to have gotten here with the old Eternal Tome, but now it's been nerfed. Um, and you see I have dragons kind of scattered over here. I have some riders over here. So I have troops kind of all over the place. So I really needed to get a ton of value out of this blimp, and I needed my Royal Champion to come through big for me when I come right through here to actually use, him, uh, use her to take out the Town Hall. So what I do, she's got the Spirit Fox. The Town Hall is weak. I don't wait for the Builder's Huts to start recharging them and saving it. So I'm like, screw it. I put her down. As soon as I do, there's just nothing left to the base. I gutted this base except for the town hall compartment. And even then, I took out the monolith, which was going to be the biggest issue that compartment could have afforded me, right? Um, and I absolutely dismantled this base, which is a base I, I do love the style of, um, but is definitely showing its age nowadays, where it's not nearly as strong. Let's show you one more. All right. Last attack, last example. If you guys like this video, like and comment. Let me know if you want to see me do this with more bases and give you guys more breakdowns. and Maybe a little bit more in-depth or something like that. Let me know. I'm just giving you guys examples from what I have done recently. This one is in Clan Rowley, right? Straight up, attack my mirror. I was number three at the time, so I attacked number three. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to line up my Archer Queen over here. Damn, Kyle, slow down. You didn't notice it. There were two air defenses in here. Plus a sweeper that went this direction that I got with that giant arrow. The point of that, I mean, I got 10% just off the bat. Um, I also triggered the invisibility tower, which is why I wanted to show you guys this replay. It's one of the only ones that has an invisibility tower. The giant arrow has two giant purposes. <laughs> Pun intended. Um, the point to it is, for one, to take out sweepers, air defense, and stuff that can be annoying. Two, to trigger invisibility towers. Um, invisibility towers are a little annoying. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, now that the invisibility tower is out of the way, I send a Coco Room in order just to eat a bomb to the face, and then I'm going to set my Super Archer Blimp. Now, in a lot of scenarios, 
this is how you make a super archer blimp very safe. You just go straight for the town hall when it's on the outside like this. And that's how the rest of this base normally eats you alive. There's not a lot left. Um, and you're having to de deal with sweepers, and you're having to deal with a monolith, and you're having to deal with a uh, an eagle. Right, so there's a million things you have to deal with, but because I'm getting my blimp right here, and I don't have to worry about that invisibility tower, I don't have to worry about my archers going anywhere they want, I can actually focus and get rid of that other sweeper. They'll take out that invisibility tower, and they'll actually take out that monolith as well, which is going to be huge. My queen is up here fighting their clan castle troops. I don't care about that anymore, though. Respectfully, my queen has served her purpose here for this attack. Um, not that it wouldn't have been nice to keep her around, but I'm not going to gripe that she's gone because both my both the enemy air sweepers are gone. Um, so same thing, I'm dropping everything down. All of it down here at the very bottom, right? I send in my mass amount of troops along with my skybird. I send my king on the outside again, kind of setting that funnel, kind of to engage um, with the enemy king and some of this stuff just over here. Even though the king doesn't matter, I don't want my dragon sidetracking off and just kind of screwing off to those and then setting in range of another air defense that I did leave it alone. And you'll notice I brought my RC in and I actually bring her in to kind of converge on the outside over here in this little compartment. That way they kind of all meet right around here is my hope. Um, so the Royal Champion goes in here. She starts going to the Archer Towers. My ability goes off. So all my um, troops are going to keep it nice and healthy right now. And they still have that Rage Gem. Um, you see my Archer Queen did finally die off because we do see some of those um, Ice Pups come off of that um, Ice Hound that they had dropped. Um, not only that, um, that my king's actually about to die to some balloons, which is the saddest thing in the world to see, because um, he just can't fight back, right? But here's, we're going to have his um, vamp stash pop off here in a second. Oh, no, we already did. Never mind. Um, but you see, I got everything kind of converging in the middle. I'm saving my royal champion's ability. She hits it right before she dies. This one's the one with the hog puppet. And this is why I've started shifting away from the hog puppet, because it just feels like I'm not getting a ton of value from it once they have nerfed it most recently, where the hog's levels are reduced. But, and, and notice my dragon got caught by the balloons anyway. But it doesn't matter, it's too late. There's nothing left to stop me. Um, the multi-archer tower goes down. I have a couple dragons, a phoenix, and my royal champion left. Um, I'd be surprised if a bomb doesn't knock her over <laughs> to, to end this one. But still, I have enough left over to get the three-star against this maxed-out Town Hall 16 in Clan or League. Guys, I am not kidding. This is I was I was right to. She I got knocked over. This is an absolutely amazing tech. You 100% should be taking the time to learn. All right, so let's go do a little recap. I hope what I've said to you guys makes sense when it comes to this attack. Now that Root Riders have been nerfed, Druids have been nerfed, Overgrowth spells have been nerfed. Skybird slash Hydra, depending on who you ask. I call it Skybird. Is going to take over. I hope you guys add this to your arsenal. Um, like I said, don't use it against me. <laughs> Please and thank you. Make sure you add this. This is viable at Town Hall 13 up. This is absolutely a high-end strat and one of the last ones you will ever, ever need. And if you need help trying to figure out how to use it, join our Discord. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what other videos you guys want to see in the future. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks, everybody.